a number of people that come in here who have issues regarding their knee. And what's happening with these folks, it's a condition known as knock knees, also known as genuvalgum. So they have this kind of configuration when they're standing, their knees cave in like this, just like this. And then they could be doing their exercises uh, such as squatting or doing their lunges or even walking, they, they have a tendency, I'm exaggerating, but sometimes these folks, they have an excessive genuvalgum or knock knees and it's contributing to knee problems. Well, what we're finding with these folks is that a lot of their issues doesn't stem from the knee, but it stems mostly from the hip. So what we're finding here with these folks is excessive hip internal rotation and a lack of external rotation. So when they're standing like this or they're doing their exercise, they're doing their squats and they're coming in like this or they're doing their lunges and they're coming in here like this when they lunge, what we're finding is that their ability to externally rotate is severely lacking and their internal rotators are way too tight in the hip. So the problem doesn't lie in the knee per se, but it's in the hip mostly. Obviously there are other conditions too, like for instance, you have fat, uh, excuse me, flat feet uh, with, so if you have flat feet, sometimes you get that, if this called pest planus, which if this foot falls flat, here, or pronation, pes planus with flat feet, or pronation, and sometimes the knee will also cave in as well. But what we see the most is a problem arising in the hip. So how do you fix that? How do you fix that lack of external rotation in the hip? Well, today we're gonna go over five exercises that'll help fix that caving in, that knock knee, that genuvalgum, that some of these folks are experiencing and it's hindering some of their activities uh, they love to do. Also, it'll help prevent later on down the road possibly getting uh, an uneven wear and tear of the knee and possible knee surgery. So, the first exercise, you can do it seated. It's uh, since, you're, since they're have excessive, excessive internal rotation, we're gonna increase external rotation. They're missing external rotation. This is internal rotation of the hip. This is external rotation of the hip. So if they're missing this, what do we do? We work in that range. So you can be seated just like this. You put like, do like a figure four with, uh, put their ankle on top of your thigh. So this is my right side right here, my right leg and thigh. I'm gonna put my right ankle on my thigh here, and I'm gonna do about three sets of 15 in here, just like this. See that? Working on that end range, opening up that hip. See that? This is, this is internal rotation, this is external rotation. So I'm working in that external rotation and through there. Start with just three sets of 15, and I'm just kind of, I'm deliberately just kind of working in that end range and through there. See that? Boom. Boom, just like that. And then you switch. So you go over here and you work. And you'll find sometimes one side is much more tighter than the other side. Over time, you've, you may have created some imbalances in through there. So again, this is externally rotating that hip in that in range right there. And do about three sets of 15. Be, de be deliberate about it. See that? I'm really deliberate in here, just like this. So let's say you're done with that. The second exercise is a butterfly stretch. You've probably seen this before. I'm gonna remove uh, this right here. And I'm gonna tilt this down just like this. It's the butterfly stretch. Tilt that down just like that. That's the butterfly stretch right there. And uh, go right here. So you're seated. You can sit just kind of like this. And I've seen folks, man, when they sit like this, whoo, they're, they're way up here like this. And I, I, it goes to show you how tight 
you know, the internal rotators have become, the adductors have become, and that's why they're having problems with their knees caving in, that knock knee problem. So, butterfly stretch, sometimes if you're this, if you're this tight, you may have to work harder to get this opened up in here. So, sitting like this, and I like to use my elbows, and I like to just kind of pry it open like this, see that? Again, three sets of 15 in that end range. Now, you might not be able to get this far. I mean, if you're, if you're right here and you're super tight, you may have to get in here and work like this in that end range, and that's fine. You work where you start with, see that? And then eventually you get to a point where you're getting down here and, and in here, see that? So those are the butter, butterfly. These are dynamic stretches. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping movement in through here, dynamic. I'm not doing a static stretch where I'm just sitting there and holding it. These are dynamic in that end range because you're trying to increase that end range of hip external rotation. So, right there, butterfly stretch in through there. So three sets of 15 in through there with the butterfly stretch. Now, the next, the next exercise is the pry squat. Now, what we're also finding with these folks who have um, knock knees is we're finding an inability to squat. And as you can see here, I'm squatting right now. You can see how this requires a lot of hip external rotation to squat. And we're finding that these folks with knock knees, they're, they don't have an ability to squat. It's become very, very poor. And because the squat forces a lot of external rotation in the hip, right? Eh? So the next exercise is called the pry squat. So what is the pry squat? The pry squat is this. You're going to find a door jam. And I'm going to move this a little closer here so you can kind of see. So you can do this in a door jam or a post, something that, where you can hold on to. And... Uh, the reason why I have you some, uh, hold on to, because sometimes people, you might not be able to get all the way down to depth to do this. So if you, if you, for instance, can only get to a squat where you can only come down so far, that's why you have a pole or a door jam or a post to hold on to so you can get yourself back up. So that's why I have you coming to a, a post or something like that to to start with but and then eventually you can get deeper and deeper into the squat now what the heck is a pry squat well a pry squat is just that what it says you're prying your hips open into the squat so as you descend into the squat you're prying I'm gonna do it this way so you can see so as you descend into the squat you're prying your hips open and you're moving your hips forward. You're prying yourself forward into the post or the door jam you're working into. See that? So you're in here. So you're gonna take a, a little bit wider shoulder width or wider, depending on your comfort level. And you know, you may have to start, you know, with a smaller stance, depending on how tight these are, your adductors and your internal rotators. But over time, you get to a point where you can open up the hips and come down to a full squat here like this. And what you're doing is you're prying yourself forward. You're prying yourself forward just like that into the post. And you see my, my back is relatively upright there vertical, perpendicular to the floor in this position here. See that? So you're prying yourself into the post or door jam. Again, if you can only come down to a certain level because you're so tight, work on it, and eventually you get to a point where you're coming all the way, all the way down into a full pry squat. Now the next exercise that is the prerequisite for uh, the next exercise. It's called a narrow squat. Now, what the heck is a narrow stance squat? 
No. So the narrow stance squat is just that. Let me move you guys over here a little bit. And so what you're gonna do, you move this like this, you see my feet. So the narrow stance squat is just that. You're putting your feet right there, pretty much touching each other. And now you're gonna come down into a squat with your feet close together, see that? Now, with your feet close together like this, you are, you're pretty much forced to open up your hips. See that? There, if, you, if you have problems with knock knees, you can't go inward this way. So, in order for your body to fit into the squat, you're gonna have to open up here. And I usually recommend, again, doing this uh, next to something you can hold on to, like a uh, post, uh, like a power rack or door jam or like a counter or sturdy chair uh, before you do this. But the prerequisite is being able to get into that pry squat. Work on that and be able to get into this deep squat position first. Once you get this, then you can get into this narrow stance squat. So, narrow stance squat here, that, and you're slowly opening up as you do this. And if you can't come all the way down at first, again, start with just some quarter squats, like in through here. Go down to just half squats. Yeah. Come down to the half. And then you get to a point where eventually you're coming all the way down into a full squat. And this is great if you, some of those folks that have excessive pronation, their feet are caving in like this or they have flat feet plus planus. This is great, because look, look at what my ankles have to do. It has to, my ankle has to, you have to come into extreme dorsiflexion here, and, you're, and you have to go into a little bit of supination for, see that? Boom. It really helps if you have flat feet this is going to help if you have flat feet, pes, pes, pes planus, or excessive pronation. It'll help correct that too, this narrow stance squat. See that? My knees are forced outwards here. That way my body can fit here in this position. And again, this isn't, these are the last two, the pry squat and the narrow stance squat are just practice to be able to get into this position. So you're just holding it here at the bottom position. It's a, oh, you, it's a static, if you will, a static stretch. Getting comfortable in this bottom position. See that? This is the side view of the narrow stance squat. This is front view of the narrow stance squat. And you're just hanging out and you're forcing that hip to open up. The next, last but not least, is a lunge. So once you've uh, been able to do the pry squat and you're getting comfortable with the narrow stance squat, now you move on to a lunge. Again, I recommend first something to hold on to when you do these. And again, this is for corrective. This is not, this is not a, a, a video on how to lunge. This is how to correct knock knees. And eventually you get to a point where you're doing them repetitively in an exercise. So, so what we're finding when people are lunging, when they lunge, they, if you have knock knees, they lunge in this position, that internal rotated position, and they come up here like this in an internally rotated position knee position or hip position excuse me so how do you fix that well now that you've done your butterfly stretches and your hip external rotation stretches and you're getting good at the pry squat and getting good at the narrow stand squat getting comfortable being down in these positions what you do you get into your lunge position here and if you're if you're notorious for bringing that in like this and getting that knock knee configuration with your lunge, what you need to do is you're gonna 
press out like this. You see? See this? So just like those, that exercise in the beginning, hip external rotation, you're gonna do about three sets of 15 like this to start, to open up the hip like this. Three sets of 15, and now the hip is out, and now I can go into a, I can stand from here like this, boom. See that? See the difference between here and here. See that? So work on that lunge position. This is my left thigh and leg. And I'm pushing out three sets of 15 here. Again, if you need to, have a post nearby. Have something, a counter, a sturdy chair to hold on to. Work in here just like this. Three sets of 15. And now you're ready to go into your stance and lunge up. Okay? Do it on the other side as well. So you're going to have the right foot, leg and thigh forward. Now, you're going to push here. Three sets of 15, just like that. Boom. That. And now, you come up from your lunge in this position, just like that. Versus coming inward like this and, you know, lunging in here like this. That's, that's a recipe for disaster for your knee. You want to open that up. Boom. See that? Practice makes perfect. So take your time through these. It's not like you're going to be able to achieve a, a deep price squat on the first day. You work at it. It's not like you're gonna be able to achieve a butterfly stretch where you're hitting your thigh on the ground in the first day. You gotta work at it. But if you want to correct, uh, correct knock knees, these are the best five exercises to do them, uh, to do to help correct that. Anyway, if you have any questions with this video, drop it off in the comment section below. We thank you for watching, we appreciate it. If you're new here, hit subscribe. And when you hit subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification button because that'll keep you in the loop with subsequent videos coming here in the near future. That way you can continue to move well and live well. Also, I know you know folks who are battling knock knees and sometimes even knee pain when they're doing their exercises or even walking. Share this with them. Sharing is caring. That way they have the knowledge to help fix this problem and hopefully prevent uh, serious problems in the knee later on in the future. So share this with them. Also, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, it lets us know you care. Anyway, we thank you for watching, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.